Welcome back. Viewers of Downton Abbey will know that in the early 20th century, women like Lady Mary were defined and often heavily restricted by the social and political landscapes surrounding them and their families. Now, in many respects, Lady Mary represents the social norms of the time, in contrast to her sister Lady Sybil, who embodies the struggle of women to find their own voice, thus giving rise to the suffragette movement and women's rights as a whole. Now, let's take a closer look at place and time Lady Mary called home. Downton Abbey is set in England in the early part of the 20th century, during a time of great social change for women. World War I had officially ended in November of 1918, leaving women to outnumber men by about three to one. As a result, women were beginning to realize that they were no longer merely arm candy for the well-dressed men of the time, and women's fashion soon began to reflect that. It was an interesting time for fashion, as it was the transition period between Belle Epoque and the flapper. The stiff frou-frou look of the Gibson girl, with her frills and high neck collars, was exchanged for a more opulent and slinkier style. By 1909, the fashionable female silhouette had changed drastically. The emphasis on a tiny waist in the Edwardian era, achieved by wearing an S-shaped corset, was replaced with a more relaxed tubular form with a higher waistline, and by the end of season three, the ladies of Downton are adopting the fashionable dropped waist style of the Roaring Twenties. Prior to the war, the famed designer Poiret tried unsuccessfully to return to the restrictive silhouette with his invention of the hobble skirt, so named because it limited the wearer's ability to walk. The tight-fitting fabric, and in some cases, a length of braiding wrapped around the knees prevented the lady from taking anything more than baby steps. But this fell out of fashion starting in 1913, and by the end of the First World War, women all over Britain had taken great strides and would not be limited by constrictive clothing again. Much like today, how we want to emulate our favourite actresses, women's fashions were heavily influenced by popular theatre and ballets of the time. The fashionable houses of Worth and Poiret embellished their creations with beads and sequins similar to ornate costumes. Tool netting and lace was layered over silks and crepe de chine for evening wear, while cotton dresses and suits in wool jersey were worn by day. Hunting garb for the upper class lady was designed by Redfern to suit the needs of the active elite. Designers wanting to embrace the abandonment of the constricting clothing of the past looked to exotic lands of afar for inspiration. Pleating and bias cutting was used to drape the body in newly available dye colours like blues and reds, while stenciling, dip dyeing and silk screening decorated the fabric to allow the wearer to stand out. Fashion up until this point had been used to restrict and constrict women. Now it was a way to express a newfound freedom, both politically and aesthetically. <laughs> When designing a period costume, especially after 1870, an often overlooked resource can be your local library. You can find newspaper articles from the time with picture advertisements that give you a really good feel for the era. It's all in the detail. Immerse yourself as much as you can in the atmosphere of the time. For this vintage project, I did my sketching in the gardens of an historical building. What do you think? He's not too keen on this one. Speaking of drawings, let's see the winning storyboard. And the winner is... Storyboard number three, as voted by readers of thehollywoodsew.com. This design is based on the Berta style double layer dress pattern. I like this style as it's so feminine and elegant. The chiffon layering and lace insert at the front neckline really evokes the classic side of Lady Mary. This one is gonna look great, and you can adjust the sash at the waist to achieve your preferred silhouette. Here is what you will need for this project. I chose my fabrics and notions to match in a dusty pink tone. Berta style double layer dress pattern, a sheer fabric like chiffon, a lightweight opaque fabric like crepe, a scalloped edge lace for the two inserts, and matching thread. So now that we've seen the pattern that I'm going to use, let's talk about the pattern adjustments. 
So first off, we're going to omit the sleeve yoke lining. So that's going to leave us with this really nice sheer sleeve here, which is one of our design features to look more like Lady Mary. Now the second feature we're going to use is a lace, scalloped lace insert in the front and the back. I love scallops and so does Lady Mary, so this is perfect. So take your lace, you can buy lace that's already scalloped, you can do it yourself but I like to buy it pre-made. And you're going to fold it exactly along the edge and line up the scallops so that it's nice and centered. Otherwise it'll look off balance and that'll just look really weird. So now that that's done, you're going to hold it and place it down with the fold because there is a fold on our pattern piece and you can see that the scallops are perfectly aligned here. So then take your pattern piece, I'm doing the front insert, but you're going to do the front and the back. Place it on like so, and then you should pin it, but I'm not going to just so I can show you. And then we're going to cut along here. Cut along the outside of the pattern piece, leaving a 5 8 of an inch gap for the seam allowance. I'm pinning it in place to get an idea of how it will look. Since this lace section here falls across the chest, you're going to want to wear a cami or a slip underneath. Now it's a great addition to your wardrobe if you're interested in vintage fashion because a lot of vintage dresses have a lace or a sheer section here. So you can also play around with the colours so they get a nice contrast too. It means you'll see this beautiful lace detail here but you're not going to see your bra through it so it's going to have a more polished look. When we get back from the break, I'm going to show you how to work with seams on sheer fabrics and we're going to go over the third and final pattern alteration.